Today we're going to be talking about one of my favourite works in the collection. Um, it's a collage by artist, pop, British pop artist Pauline Boaty. Um, it's a colossal woman who's growing out of the mountain. Um, she's wearing quite a natty crocheted dress and as you can see, fleeing from this rather gargantuan woman are men in little boats all around. Um, the imagery from this collage is taken from uh, wood engravings from the Victorian period. Uh, the imagery from um, this period was a huge inspiration to British pop artists such as Pauline Boaty or Peter Blake. Um, really liked it for its folk appeal and um, its kind of kitsch imagery. Um, even though it's quite like a comical, humorous image, it also has some ser more serious undertones. Um, it's a kind of wry take on the idea of the white European uh, dominance of the sea by turning it on its head and having a white European woman overlooking this kind of um, colonial scene. Um, Pauline Boaty um, makes a comment on uh, British man's dominance of the sea um, during um, the 19th century also. So um, Pauline Boaty uh, initially trained as a stained glass um, window artist um, at the Royal College of Art and it was whilst she was there that one of her tutors encouraged her to experiment with collage. Um, so this is a really early example of her using this medium. Um, she would then go on to create larger scale um, collaged paintings with bright, bold, geometric backgrounds and using uh, images from mass popular culture at the time, cultural icons such as Marilyn Monroe, Jean-Paul Belmondo, um, using the popular imagery that artists such as Peter Blake or um, Derek Boschier um, were using at the time, but providing her own female perspective on this proliferation of uh, mass media during this period. Um, she was also uh, an actress. Um, she worked in radio. Uh, she was featured in a highly influential documentary that really put the British pop art onto the scene, um, a film called Pop Goes the Easel by a uh, famous British director, Ken Russell. Um, but the way that she was featured in that was um, more as a kind of uh, sex symbol as opposed to an artist in her own right. And during her lifetime and the years after, um, Boti kind of suffered from this image in that people didn't take her seriously as an artist at the time. Um, it's only in recent years that her work is being reconsidered as significant um, part of 1960s art scene. Um, Unfortunately, due to a tragic early passing and this reputation that she had, a lot of her works have been lost and she hasn't been given the recognition that she deserves. In the early 1990s, that art historian uh, David Meller uh, began rediscovering her work and so she was featured in a major pop art exhibition um, during that time and um, subsequently since then her reputation has been gaining and in 2014 she was subject of a, a major um, retrospective which was shown first at Wolverhampton Art Gallery and then came to Pallant House Gallery as well called um, Pauline Boaty Pop Artists and Women. Um, it was through this um, display that the gallery recognised that it only had three works by a female artist um, associated with the pop art scene. Um, some soft sculptures by Jan Howarth, who was also responsible for the 
um, Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band uh, album cover. And so through, from this exhibition, it provided a wonderful opportunity to uh, apply for funding to acquire a, a, a work by Pauline Boaty and welcome into the collection, um, which um, was um, successful in 2019. And so this work helps to strengthen the representation both of a major holding of British pop art um, and also um, women artists within the collection.